Good morning, everyone. About quarter after 10. It's gonna be a long study day, so I figured why not show you how that happens. My exam is literally, literally 24 hours from right now. I am skipping lecture today to study literally all day. It's fine. I forget what I even have today. Drug lit and I think actually ID, but ID today is for the final exam and it's like the resident is teaching so it's not even like a big deal. So I decided to take it upon myself. Stay home. 12 hours of studying will take me to 10 o'clock and I'll probably stay up past that too. So I got my coffee. I'm going to first kind of review what I did last night which was my one professor's lectures so that's like tuberculosis mycobacteria invasive aspergillosis cryptococcus and invasive candidiasis and i figured if i can find some like khan academy has some videos anyway so let's start with tuberculosis shall we and let's get the show on the road to another cell this is our teeth has had prior teeth exposure there are different types of hypersensitivity react here to here, it let's say you plant a PPD in a person. Lunch break. Breakfast break. What time is it? Yeah, it's probably lunch break. I did I ever tell you guys about Sketchy? Remember how I said I used to watch America? I still do. But she's the one that showed me, or like that Sketchy's a thing, and I forgot I even had it, which is great because I've micro and farm. So I'm watching right now about aspergillus since that is part of my exam. I watched the actual like tuberculosis micro one. I watched the farm anti-tuberculosis things i just watched candida candidiasis whatever and i'm gonna watch this one the cryptococcus and then i'll watch like the antifungal farm one and then i like i always do i have old exams so i'm gonna go through this chunk of stuff and then i will start with my second chunk of stuff which is viral stuff which i again have all the things i have the antiviral farm stuff and i have like viruses in micro sketchy micro so i'm gonna eat my english muffin watch some more videos i just do really well with like visual things like i can close my eyes and like think of a whole scene which is like the whole point of like sketchy is they draw out everything but like that's what i did for cardio oh my gosh i did so much cardio with sketchy sketchy sponsor me but anyway let's get back to it because we've been on a, on a roll so far so let's keep it going then aspergillus is that it is actually Notice the hyphae of aspergillus forming. We'll help you remember this in two ways. Hello, time for a check-in. It's 1.41. I have officially went through the entire One Professor stuff a few times. So that's cryptococcus, aspergillosis. Candida, tuberculosis, and mycobacteria. So this is like my first, my first dry run essentially. Some of which though I don't think are like right. There was one that was um, about mucor mycosis or whatever. And it said that rhinocerebral something was a common thing. But I have in my notes that it's like rare. So I don't actually know. Maybe is that like just how if you have mucor mycosis that's like the most common presentation? See it's like contradicting. It says that a well known presentation is rhinocerebral mucormycosis but then it says rare infection so like is it the only thing that usually happens if you get mucormycosis i'm guessing that's why it meant that so gotta love that weird wording but anyway i'm doing pretty good i think i've made it through a bunch next we're moving on to viruses so we have like the flu we have polio um some stis i don't remember which ones hsv V actually no that's a lie it's not HSV I keep thinking that because it was on our antibiotic quiz even though you don't use antibiotics for viruses but it's like not on our exam so I keep screwing that up oh it's like oncoviruses oh it's Epstein-Barr and HPV that would make sense but I think then that's it so I'm going to first of all read through these notes once watch my videos <laughs> might make another coffee I don't know I'll probably get really shaky but man, we are pushing along. It's a nice day out, kind of, so that's something. <laughs> but anyway, we're making some progress. I'm keeping track of how well I do on, like, all the old exams I have. So I'll erase everything I have and, like, take it again eventually. So that's about it. So let's keep 
keep it on. And I will talk to you whenever I, I guess, am done with something else or I'll film something that I'm doing. Okay, bye. Hello, when did I update last? I don't know what I got. My prophylactic coffee number two. 427. I am, mm, I'd say, halfway through the viruses. I got through like introviruses. We did uh, influenza, we did adenovirus. I did rhinovirus, I'm on to enterovirus. I had to do the STIs and the onca whatever my bobs. But I think I'm doing okay, Sketchy, Sketchy's helping. I have the whole thing, like say for example, which one? I just did the rhinoviruses, right? So it's a bunch of rhinos, obviously. Um, they have the little rhinos because pico means little, I think. Um, so it's a picornavirus. It's not fecal oral. It is respiratory droplets. You can get it through like sneezing and stuff or from fomites. So make sure you wash your hands a lot. The rhinovirus grows actually at 33 degrees Celsius instead of the normal 37. So you get it in your upper respiratory area, not like a lower respiratory tract system because it's like a cooler area of your respiratory system. Sure. Oh, there's a bunch of different serotypes. There's like a hundred and so, or more than a hundred, whatever. Um, and that's why we don't have a vaccine for the cold because there's a trillion different things. And I think the antibodies you would produce or you do produce are like gone in like 18 months. So they're transient. So it would be stupid to do it anyway. Did I miss anything? Oh, it binds to like um, our cells via iCam1. Because the lady's holding a camera and it's hooked around the rhino and it's one camera iCam1. Ugh, it's so great. But I think it's like a good chunk of stuff. It's a naked capsid. Doesn't have an envelope. Unlike influenza, which does have an envelope. Because that one's at the dentist. Because influenza is really ortho my my socks mm. don't really know that one and so it was something about like the orthodontist and that one does have an envelope <sighs> that one it has eight segments and that segmentation is important because of um antidenic drift and shift drift is the less severe one yes because it's one point mutation and shift is like a re, re not reassessment reassembly re Reassortment of things, and that's what causes pandemics. Drifts are just epidemics. <laughs> I'm learning. That's exciting. I had to do this again. I'm not gonna record myself doing it because that would be a long time of recording. But if I just like say it out loud and like try and recall things, I think that helps a lot. I did adenovirus, which um, we mostly just covered. Conjunctivitis, which is viral conjunctivitis. Um, it's uh, redness in the eyes, swelling, not really itchy, that's more with allergies, um, it's not really purulent, pur 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 purulent, 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 whatever, discharge, you have watery eyes, um, it's not really, bacterial is the purulent one, it usually goes in one eye and then it stops and it transfers to the other eye, but, um, as we know, there's nothing you can do for viruses, but you do give topical antibiotics because to prevent secondary bacterial infections, so you'll give them polymixin B trimethoprim, isn't it fun learning things? Okay, so obviously something's clicking. These last six hours have not been wasted. Yay! I have to get back on my like, uh, what's the other stuff I had to do? My co I'm gonna have to revisit those, that's for sure, but we're doing good. I'll update you whenever I feel like it. So, see you guys later. And we're back. Well, I don't even know what to say. I have successfully, mm, I use that term loosely, I have, at the bare minimum, gone through everything. I kind of stopped at the STIs because I was getting bored and I didn't really care. And it was like, I couldn't even like understand. It was just like, just like dumb things. Like they didn't post the notes like while we were in class. There was like blanks in the PowerPoints. And like, oh, like, don't worry, the answers will be posted. Like, when we post the PowerPoint. They're not, and so I don't freaking know anything because I, I just don't see the point in not, like, I can't follow along if there's nothing freaking there. Anyway, that's just me complaining. But I took all the other old exams for my virus stuff. There's ones that are just like, I'm convinced are wrong. <laughs> 
but the answers say they're right and I don't believe it. Like one, one was talking about the target of Tamiflu and like what it does. The like, I wouldn't say class of drugs, but whatever. It's a neuraminase inhibitor. Neuraminase is a thing in the flu or whatever. The like viral stuff is wrapped in like, I can't even say it, sialic acid. Sialic acid. Okay. Is that what I said? I don't remember. Anyway, sialic acid is the things that neuraminase cleaves so it can open up and all little virus particles and stuff go everywhere. Tamiflu, it inhibits the cleaving of the sialic acid so you don't get the release of particles. But in her thing, it said the right answer was that it targets the sialic acid. But like, I don't believe it. It's literally called a neuraminase inhibitor. So that like, those things just like irk me. But now I'm pretty much just gonna go back. Just hang on, Lauren asked me to open the door. Un memento. Okay, where was I? But that's pretty much what I've been doing for the last X amount of hours that I have been studying. Now I'm pretty much just gonna go back, redo, not redo, I'm gonna reread basically everything, watch a bunch of sketchy videos again, retake the entire thing this time. You get groceries? I said, did you get groceries? Yes. Oh. You need a study break? <sighs> sure. Oh, okay. Are you recording? Yeah. Whoops.